Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to do Freezing Vibrations Episode 9 review. Now, listen, hold on. Before I get started, I'm going to make this video very quick because, honestly, right now, my throat, not exactly in the best condition, all right? Far from 100%, very far. So, I'm going to try and muscle my way through for you. And I'm going to make it quick because I can only fight for so long. At this point in time, I'm groggy, all right? I'm in the ring. I'm like Rocky. I'm, like, I'm groggy. So I'll make it real quick, all right? At this point in time, I'm a one-minute man, okay? It's unfortunate, but that's the way it has to be. So first of all, animation, I did like it overall. It was good. Pacing, okay, solid. Not that great. But it was solid. Overall story progression, it was, it was... See, obviously it's there now. Because now we have these two fights being set up. We have um, Kathy Lockhart versus Julia. So we have uh, two of the top five Pandora in the world going at, going at each other. Julia says that Kathy is actually like the lowest of the top five. And she should, she, she's trying to prove... Uh, Kathy's trying to prove... Uh, I can't even... Uh, Kathy's trying to prove Julia wrong, but Julia at this point in time has the upper hand because her vote weapon is just like disgusting. She has these like I don't know what they're called, like division something. And like they're the same type as Elizabeth's. And they fall around and they spin at like Mach 3 and make supersonic waves that cut people. And it's painful. Duh. And even though I think Kathy has the quintuple axle or the quadruple. I, th I think it's the quintuple. Regardless, she has the quintuple axle, not fast enough, only Mach 2. So, you think that she's going to catch her off guard, but no. Julia apparently did some research into Kathy's power scaling, and she at this point in time, she has upper hand. But Kathy, she's still fine. She's still doing her thing. Next fight. Charles Bonaparte versus... Elizabeth Mabley. Now, the thing here is that Elizabeth Mabley, Miss Mabley, she ha was tortured for a period of days, gets up, talks smack to Shifon Fairchild. Not a smart move, but fuck it. Shifon Fairchild. You're, the, only thing that, the only thing that you're worthy of right now is contempt. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. And Chief on Fairchild. I mean, because you can't tell if she's emotional or not. Unless, like, you see, like, the shadow over her face. Because that's when, like, they signify that she's pissed. But the thing here is that she still has the Brock eyes going on. And, like, she just... She, she, she can't see shit. But whatever. She can obviously hear her. And, basically, Mabley says, You were once worthy of respect. Like my mother. Like Amelia. But now, you're not. So I'm gonna walk past you like you don't exist. And then she goes off, and then she assists a uh, satellizer and Rana and Amelia when they're surrounded by all these Chevalier Pandora. She takes him out real quick. Precision shots. Feel him, feel him, feel him. Done. And then they're gonna walk over to the laboratory. Or how's the laboratory so she can get the laboratory reports. And the whole point of this is to show the world what really happened in Alaska. That's the whole point of this. To show the world. Show what happened in full. Because they show the commercials. And people around the globe assume that what they're doing in the in the uh, Alaska laboratory is actually good. But when in fact, it's not at all. Alright, E-Pandors are dying. And the thing here. Is that. Charles Bonaparte, she comes in. Where the fuck y'all go? Where the fuck are y'all going? Oh, yeah. And she's French, not Australian. And the thing here is that Elizabeth Mabley, number two in West Genetics, is going to go against one of the top five in the world, Charles Bonaparte. She's going to get merged. And plus, you can also assume that since she has suffered... Because she's not in 100... There's no way. She's not in 100% condition. No way. No way. Alright, she was tortured for a period of days. And 
she led to the collapse or yeah let's say that at this point in time she led to the collapse of her father's company so that's and satellizer says that she attacked her so she can go over and talk to you know daddy bridget over here probably the most pristine family in the world so i mean elizabeth the way it's kind of planned out is that sarah just says that it was planned by elizabeth but she's like i don't know what you're talking about but she says she says it in a way where you're like no shit you planned it obviously sarcasm all right so fascinating so there is story progression overall. There is, all right. I'll, I'll I'll give you that. But what I can say is that at this point in time, I'm still like on the fence as to whether I, I should give it a good rating. And only because I liked it, but for some reason, some of the parts I was like very meh. Like some of the emotional scenes where it was like. You're happy that, like, because, because, like, the thing is that when you look at the manga, Salazar knew that she was alive. She knew she was alive. But when she comes back, she's like, I'm so happy to see that you're alive. But I'm like, you knew she was alive, according to the manga. And the anime is different, obviously. And when it came to that, when it came to the beginning scenes with Rana, Rana, she comes in there automatic to gauge in combat against Julia. And then she sees Salazar. She's like, it's good to see you again. Attack, fail. I'm like, but wait, hold on, pause. Like, it, it, it was just weird. The only emotional scene in the actual episode, in my personal opinion, was when Elizabeth was talking smack to Shifa. But the other scenes that are emotional, like when we have Charles say something bad about the EPN door that actually died, uh, Gina, and then Emilia gets pissed off and she strikes and she fails, obviously. When it came to the scenes with Elizabeth and... Satellizer, I thought were very meh. Very, very meh. And the flashback part, well, basically, we, we, we kind of know where Shifon, not Shifon, I'm sorry, where Charles stands. Where, where in which she states that you don't understand what the top have to do, what the top have to sacrifice in order to benefit humanity. And we can assume that her father was like a top individual. And he said in his flashback that he that he had no qualms becoming the villain, the villain, for a particular goal or a task. So obviously her father, her family, Charles's family, had to had some sacrifices made and be portrayed as the bad guys in order to benefit humanity. So that's why, or probably one of the reasons why, she's so adamant about following orders and never questioning the top brass. Because her father was a top brass, and he was actually a good guy overall. But the problem is, some of the top dudes, a lot of the top dudes in this world, like the guys of Chevalier, are just dicks. They're evil as fuck. They need to be shot in the head, alright, execution style, in the middle of a damn desert. So, not everyone's like that, Charles. Not everyone. But, that being said... I mean, it was okay plus. All right, let's call it okay plus because there are parts that I liked. I, I did like overall, but there's some parts where I was like very like meh, like eh, eh. It could be better. So, oh yeah, and Roxanne. Roxanne didn't get involved. She was right there when Amelia, Satellizer, and Rana and Kazuo were hauling ass, and she didn't say a damn thing. She just said, you know what? I don't want to take part in other people's affairs, and she just walked out like fucking. America. So, <laughs> that's just the way it is. Uh, I suppose so. I'm done. I'm done. I'm surprised it went this long, but fuck it. King of Lightning. The rating overall is OK+. And I will see you guys later. Peace. Have a nice day.